Okay, so this um, isn't really new material. This is material you would have seen um, uh, last semester. It's just, we're just trolling here. It's another, it's, a, it's just an application we can do. So you should know from your engineering that if you have a, uh, a graph of force against distance, something like this, say, you should know that the work done uh, is equal to the area under the curve. But my understanding is that's something that you know about. So say we've got um, um, the points we're looking at is we're going from A to B. So I'm just, I'm just going to kind of argue why the area under the curve is equal to the work done. So here's a force distance graph between two points. Cut the distance into n little bits of equal width. Okay. So I'll make this fairly exaggerated. So these uh, little, they're kind of rectangles with roundy bits on top, I suppose. There should be far more of them than I'm actually drawing here. That, that, that. Well, I, and for, the, for there to be loads of them, um, they would have to be very... Uh, narrow okay now label the midpoints so this is x1 x2 x3 x4 etc and xn and what we're going to do is we're going to estimate the work done over this thing by saying that the work done over this thing is approximately equal to the force at the midpoint this is not accurate, but it's more accurate if we make um, the num the if we chop it up into finer and finer. The language I would use is mesh. Okay, so say this one the the area on well well, hmm. Let's just say we're talking about the work in this region. Okay, um, so the total work done is. The work done over this little distance plus this little distance plus this this little distance plus this little distance and add up all those works there's n of them okay and this is approximately equal to um if we assume and it's a dodgy assumption at the moment that the force is kind of equal to the force at the midpoint then the work done over this little thing would be the value of the force at the midpoint times the width. So it'll be f of x1, which is the force, times the distance, which is the width of this. So you get f of x1 times delta x plus f of x2 times delta x, etc. the whole way up. And this gives you, adding up, f of x by delta x. And this approximates the area under the curve because if you do um, the force, by the distance you get that area so this is an approximation so the work is approximately the area under the curve and how you improve the approximation is I won't get into it but basically if you make these make loads of little boxes make them very very narrow uh, you make the delta x small so the width of them very small which is the same by the way so this is equivalent to saying that the number of boxes gets very very big and this thing is actually the integral so this is something i don't know how much time was spent on this i haven't great time to work on it either so w is equal to the limit as n gets big as the number of boxes gets bigger of uh, the sum of the force by the distance and this is the definition of the integral So this is actually like a big S standing for sum, like this is a sum. And then this is the delta X, and if the delta X gets small, you get a little DX. The delta is a capital Greek D, and this is a little Greek D, or it's a little D. Okay, so this, uh, and we could have said, okay, so this is showing, what's the hell is this showing? 
Um, this is probably, I suppose, showing the relationship between the work done in the area under the curve. And to improve the approximation, you make it an integral. The work is, um, look at this. And then, okay, you got three things here. The work, the area under the curve, and the integral. Of course, the integral is the same as the area under the curve. That's what the integral is defined as um, by us. And then the area under the curve, you know, is the work. So the, f the work is equal to the integral of the force against distance. It'll appear on your thing like this. Okay. Now we'll do a little example here. Uh, the kind of thing that we'll ask you to do. Suppose that the force on an object at a distance x meters from a point O, measured in kilonewtons, is given by this force. So it's going to move from O, a point O, which is 0 meters from O, to 15 pi. I want to find the work done over that uh, region. Now, the reason that like we're not doing force by distance is the force is variable. And that's um, why you need to do an integral, because the force is actually changing. Now, you can say average force by distance, but the question, how do you calculate the average force? You'll need integration for that as well. So what you want to say here, that work is the integral of force and you're going from 0 to 15 pi. Force here is 10x sine x dx. Okay, now we have an integral to calculate. Um, let's go at it. Now it's very tempting to go at this directly in that we know the antiderivative of 10x is 10x squared over 2 and we know the antiderivative of sine x is minus cos x. But they're multiplied together. That means you cannot do them directly. That's out. The next option is manipulation. The only manipulation that you could possibly do here is that you could take out the constant 10, but you're still kind of in the mire. You've got x sine x. The next thing is a substitution. Now, if you know enough, a little bit about substitution, you know that the uh, thing has to be inside something else. And the only function that's inside something else here is x. And if you do w equal to x, all you're going to do is replace the x's with w's. It doesn't actually do anything. So what's our fourth technique? Integration by parts. So we'll write down the integration by parts formula, which is on the uh, big tables. Okay. So, um, off we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to We've mentioned this in a few videos. If it's an integral and the antiderivative is somehow complicated, we just do the antiderivative on its own. So we're just going to forget about the limits for the time being and work with 10x sine x dx. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to use integration by parts. So we need to pick a u. Now the u is chosen according to Liate. L stands for logs. There's no logs here. Uh, I stands for inverse trig. Now there's trig but not inverse trig. And A is algebraic. And there is an algebraic here. It's 10x. So this is U. And everything else then is dV. Okay. So the formula says UV. So this is our U dV. Equal to U. U is 10x by um, v. So this obviously is integration by parts. So we've got dv is equal to sine x dx. And now what you do is you, how do you get from dv to v? You anti-differentiate. So if I anti-differentiate both of these, I get antiderivative or integral of dv is v. And then I look into the tables, antiderivative of sine x is minus cos x. So v is minus cos x. minus antiderivative of v, which is minus cos x, and then du. So if you differentiate this, you get du dx equal to 10, and multiply both sides by dx, you get du is 10 dx. So what have we got here? We've got uh, uv minus antiderivative v du. So we've used uh, integration by parts. Um, now I'm missing a I probably should have kept that for something else in particular this now. Um, so what I'm saying is to calculate an integral, we do the antiderivative. And I recommend with a complicated antiderivative like parts, 
what I recommend that we do is that we um, do the add to derivative first. So we're doing that. So uh, here I'm going to write this 10x by minus cos x plus by minus is minus. Minus by minus is plus. Fix the 10. And so the 10 is a constant that can be fixed. Minus by minus is plus. Anything tricky here, remember, just pause me. And then the antiderivative cos, uh, look in the tables and it's sine. We don't need the plus c here though because we are doing uh, an integral. Okay. So off we go. The work done therefore is the is this thing here, and we found the antiderivative. So how do you calculate an integral? You antidifferentiate. We've done that here. So you got minus ten x uh, cos x plus ten sine x. If you want to check your answer, of course you can differentiate this. This will give you ten cos x, and you do a product rule on this, and it'll work. Right. So we're going from 0 to 15 pi. Because there's sines and cosines around, we have to do our calculator in radians. Substitute top limit. That's minus 10 times 15 pi by cos of 15 pi plus 10 sine 15 pi minus, substitute in the bottom limit, minus 10 by 0 cos of 0 plus 10 by sine of 0. So top limit, 15 pi, 15 pi, 15 pi, minus bottom limit, 0, 0, 0. You can bang this into the calculator. I'm happy I don't have to because 15 pi is uh, it's 7 lots of 2 pi. 2 pi is a full revolution. So it's 7 and a half revolutions. So it's 180 degrees. And if you know about sine and cos, then this is okay. Cos of 180 degrees is minus 1. This is minus 150 pi by minus 1 is 150 pi. Sine of 180 degrees, or sine of pi, whatever, or sine of 15 pi, whatever you want to do yourself, you put it into the calculator, you get 0. This is 0 times, it doesn't matter, this is 0, and sine of 0 is 0. So it's just 150 pi. You're engineers, so we'll give you uh, a rounding. I'm quite happy with 150 pi. If you're going to round, I'd like four significant figures, 471.2, and then units. So look at this formula, force by distance. What's the force? Kilonewtons, distance is meters, so kilonewton meters, and that's, that's that.